little better about that, but that's okay, we'll get through this. <laughs> Good morning, internet friends. Today is day one of like, let's just wing it and see what kind of content I come up with. I've like alluded to this so many times on my YouTube channel and I tried it once before, but I love daily vloggers. There is something about like telling a story daily. It has a start and a finish and it just is like this beautiful masterpiece that is just one day and one day only. First off though, I did wanna talk a little bit about Depop. Some of you guys may know this, but I started a Depop store. I think I'm going on like week two or three now. I ended up cross posting a ton of items on there and I do use a service called Vendu to cross post all my items. So if you're a reseller, uh, definitely recommend Vendu, not sponsored. Even if they reached out to me, which they have in the past, I don't think I would accept a sponsorship only because I just don't like being in the reseller realm. It's all entrepreneurship and I'm just like, man, I suck at giving advice on entrepreneurship. If, if anything, I could tell you what not to do because I've learned a lot of that over the years. I don't know what this is. Okay, so anyways, let's circle back to Depop. Depop so far? I am not digging it the same way that I thought I would. For a split second, I was like almost all in on it. I was ready to put everything I got into that platform. I think where my problem lies, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that might watch this video and be like, that's all I sell on is Depop. I think my biggest thing is all I sell on is eBay and Poshmark. You add in another service and it's just like, Okay, where do we draw the line, you know? I think with Depop, because you have to share your listings, you have to just like maintain the algorithm over there. It's like, I already do that on Poshmark and I already put money into that service because like I have a bot that shares my listings. Don't even get me started on the drama that goes into like, can you buy a bot or not buy a bot? I very much like to put my labor in other places, not on staring at a computer screen for like five hours a day just to cheer my items. I still will continue to cross post onto Depop just because I think some of my listings just will be a really good sell over on that platform. If you were selling on Depop though and you love it, I think that is amazing because like, dude, sky's the limit when it comes to entrepreneurship these days. I think all of these platforms are just like, yes, there's stuff to complain about with all of them, but at the end of the day, this is legit a service that they offer you, that allows you to make money that like, it doesn't necessarily have a cap, you know what I mean? Like you could work as hard as you want, you could make as much money as you want. I think what happens to me is I always try and put like as much of a positive spin on what I do for a living because I think there's a lot of hatred <laughs> towards what I do for a living. And I think that sucks. Like it really sucks that we're stuck in this frame of mind that reselling is like kind of this like shady way of making a living. I am always just trying to remind myself of that constant battle. Okay, anyways, uh, so yeah. I need to clearly start making bullet points for the stuff that I want to talk about because man oh man can I go on some tangents. Today's agenda, I am going to go to Dollar Day at the Goodwill Boutique. Second on the agenda, you guys. Kate Moss has been popping up in the news media cycle lately for reasons that I really don't care to talk about on this channel, but she's like everywhere right now. And it's given me very 90s nostalgia vibes of Kate Moss style. I, she was the OG model off duty, you know? Like you, you look at her photos and you're just like, dude, how do I, how do I capture that look? What do I gotta do? Like she was just so effortlessly cool. And one of the things that is like on heavy rotation for her is the most basic thing possible. And that is just a crisp white t-shirt. Like we're talking, you know, round neckline, just like, Little bit of, little bit of line detail on the sleeves, but just a basic white t-shirt. Like man oh man, does she know how to dress a white t-shirt so well. I actually don't have any crisp white t-shirts right now at this moment, a little weird, I know. So today we're gonna go to Target. I know, I know, I know. Target's not my favorite place, but in a pinch, it'll do. So we're gonna go to Target and see if I can find some really cute basic white t-shirts. I say really cute and like, I mean, I don't think you can make basic white t-shirts really cute, but it just felt like the right word to say at that time. Outfit check for today is super basic. We're actually just going with 
some 1990s express overalls. I've had this in my collection for ages. And I feel like I don't wear these enough. But for right now, I'm wearing a Zara cropped bralette. I thrifted this, I don't know, maybe like a month ago now, but it's kind of been on heavy rotation. It's just like a good underneath staple piece. And then I just recently got in these Crocs. Uh, I talked about these. I got these in purple when I went to Florida. Just, I call them my geriatric shoes because, yeah, I mean, they're a little, like, not quite very stylish, I don't think is the word that I would use. Like, they are comfort shoes, you know? They kind of remind me of the Tevas, where it's like, uh, are those really stylish or are they comfortable? These are comfortable. What's doing? What's the issue? Huh? Have you not eaten your breakfast yet? Is that what's going on? You wanna hang out, but you still gotta eat your breakfast. We have some priority issues with this dog. <laughs> this store has easily become one of the like quicker places for me to just run in and out. Sometimes I find something and sometimes I find absolutely nothing. Today I did find a soft surroundings like cover up. It's just so beautiful. The embroidery on it. Oh my gosh. I could not leave this behind. It was so pretty. I think I'm probably going to sell it, but man, the moment I tried it on, I was like, oh snap. It's so good. So good. Kate Moss. We're vibing with Kate Moss today. Not all of Kate Moss's qualities though, for obvious reasons, but you know. Quick question to the fashion world. What is going on with cut off jeans? What I mean by cut off jeans is like literally cutting off the top of the jeans and just letting them fray. What's going on with that? What's, what's the vibe? I feel like Julia Fox did it and she did like a, she did a how to, uh, to cut it off and she used the, the cut off portion as a top and then she wore the jeans, but she like ruined the jeans during the live of the how-to, but I've seen them everywhere now. And I'm just like, I get it. It's a good way to make high-waisted jeans low rise, right? Reduce, reuse, theme around here. But there's a overabundance of donations with this style and I am so intrigued with it. Like, I'm like, is it clearly not working? Like, is it not? what we all cracked it up to be like did you know are they doing the DIY wrong what's the deal what's the vibe something something's going on with this whole aesthetic and yeah I'm very perplexed by it <laughs> reading a lot about this to help with skin barrier and I feel like mine has been severely damaged since I've moved here so this is like supposed to be a holy grail we're gonna give it a try Absolutely hate to admit this, but Target has some really stinking cute stuff. 
like cute, cute stuff. I think they're currently doing either a collaboration with Levi's or they're just consistently carrying Levi's in the store now, which I find really interesting. We see that a lot in fashion with like kind of watered down brands where, you know, they will sell them at different places. One thing that I did find really interesting though is all the Levi's had stains on them, which I mean, as a consistent thrift shopper, I was like, what? wait a minute, I find Levi's in better condition than this. One thing that I will say though, and I wanna put a like disclaimer in this, if I didn't have the job that I do, I would not thrift as much and I probably would not be able to accumulate as big of a wardrobe as I have. And I would probably rely more on stores like this to clothe myself. <laughs> I'm just in, a fortunate spot where I can spend the time to find really cool clothes at the thrift store. Like I've built up this career and that's just kind of where I'm at now in my life. I always think about quality whenever I'm in stores like that because it just shocks me every single time. I don't go into big box stores like that very often, especially when I lived in LA, it was just a lot harder for me to access. So I'm just not used to seeing clothes that are just that shit of quality. <laughs> I was a big time proactive user for years and proactive is known for bleaching clothes. So I had to learn what clothes bleach easily. And even after using proactive, I still see the same sort of discoloration specifically on clothes like that. It is always the like mass produced dyed clothing that has those issues. So I am going to use this opportunity to talk about Quality! Okay. Da -da. But uh, we're gonna need a sit down chat for this. This is not like a car chat. This is like a intimate, let's just discuss the nuances of quality clothing. <clears throat> Let us begin. A brief overview of the consistent decline of quality clothing. I stumbled upon an article from 1974. So clearly this problem has been an ongoing thing for quite some time. And I think that's really where the problem lies is it's like, we knew this was happening. Fast fashion actually started in the 1970s. You have campus casuals, you have buyer two, like all those brands that you see in abundance at the thrift stores. Well, that is a clear representation of it starting in the 1970s. So they knew this was happening and they weren't gonna do anything about it. I will leave a link down below to this article, but just to give you a brief overview, some of the key takeaways that I got out of this article was one, the fact that women, and yes, I say women, they specifically referred to women. Men's quality apparently hadn't declined just yet. Women's quality clothing was currently in decline and it is supposedly our fault. <laughs> <laughs> the reasoning as to why it was all our fault is because we're not returning the items and we're just basically accepting our fate. I think the ultimate question I got out of this article though, is it women accepting their fate and just not returning items and not speaking up for the quality of clothing? Or is it like the Edison conundrum? So it's a known fact, Thomas Edison made the light bulb, but then he realized light bulb doesn't go out have to make light bulb that then goes out so that consumers can buy more light bulbs. Something tells me, I don't have any facts to back me up about this, but something tells me most fashion industry brands have realized the lower quality clothes they make, the more people are going to buy more clothing and thus just feeds the system. Also, don't even get me started on the fact that women are just constantly conditioned to feel like they need the next best thing. This article does go on to bring up some really good points about the fact that, you know, the overall training of garment workers has declined. Pre-World War II era, most garment workers went to Europe to learn the specific intricacies of making a garment. Now, everything is piecemeal. You have one person specifically making that part of the item and then it goes on to the next person. So it's like an assembly line system. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about quality clothing. What do I look for in quality clothing? And I also wanna say, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't buy fast fashion because I understand if that is in your price budget and your time budget, then that is okay. Like nobody's gonna beat you up about it. And if they are, they got a lot of things that they need to learn about life. <laughs> Some key things to look for, synthetics versus natural fibers. Now this one isn't always something that you need to rely on because some synthetics really aren't that bad. Looking at the tag and realizing that 70% of the item is made out of synthetic fabric, 
probably not gonna be the best quality. Look for cotton, look for wool, look for cashmere. Next, pay close attention to the stitching. Stitching is everything. I have some examples for you. This shirt is a thrift store bought shirt, but it is a current brand. Christian Siriana, Project Run Runway? Was that, was he a winner on that? I honestly don't know. Go ahead and pull on that stitching. Let's just see how uneven that stitching comes out. It's just, it's, it's all over the place. This is stitched inside and out. So it has some reinforcement to it. You know this is gonna be quality. Let's pull on those stitches. Look at that, look at that beauty. Look at how good of stitching that is. That's some vintage magic for you. I'm not a fan of this advice because it can be very limiting, especially if you're shopping at the thrift store, but I do think it is a solid indication of allowing you to see if it's quality or not quality. Was this made by a high-end manufacturer? And that is making sure that patterns match up. I don't think it's the end-all be-all. I don't think it always leads to quality. However, it is a really good indication that it is quality. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Patterns matching up, really good quality, like top tier. Patterns not matching up, but maybe good fabric content, still quality. Still okay in my book. Last but not least, care tags. Care tags are such a good indicator. However, most high-end brands will just slap on dry clean only. And I think it's a really good way for people to think automatically that like, oh, that's really good quality. Rayon is a good example. <clears throat> Reformation. Um, you know, they put dry clean only on everything. Do I recommend dry cleaning those dresses? Not necessarily. I think there's ways around that. No Laundress is still not sponsoring me. A little better about that, but that's okay. We'll get through this. Laundress is a fantastic company when it comes to caring for your clothes, especially those high-end fabric contents. Uh, dry clean is not always a sustainable way, and it is also not always an affordable way. I know I can't afford to get all my clothes dry cleaned, so I choose to invest more on the back end side and make sure that I'm cleaning the garments properly. Mesh bags, oh my goodness. If you don't have mesh bags, what, what's, what's going on? Of course, yes, um, this is a Mickey Mouse mesh bag, but my goodness, stock up on these. These are your best friend. Uh, delicate cycle with like a rayon garment, throw it in this and it's gonna be good. Hand wash it if you can, if you have the time for it, but overall, knowing that you can care for dry clean only items at home just gives you that much more power and confidence to purchase some of these better quality clothing items. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much for joining me in the brief overview of the consistent decline of clothing. <laughs> I hope that left you guys with a positive attitude. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, this is already such a big mess. Like it's just so messy. And no, I am not a female accepting my fate. I am just saying that uh, nuance, nuance is key here. I think it's just, it's a big old jumbled mess at this point. And the bummer is we have the proof, thanks to the New York Times, that in 1974, they were already talking about this, but here we are. Okay, well, the dogs are going crazy outside and I gotta wrap up this video. So uh, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.